G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. For those of you wanting to make a transition into flying a first jet, the Nier 5E Tiger is a great choice. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is first give you a general overview of it, and then we're going to go through the cockpit. The F5 is a single seat, multi-purpose fighter. So this means it has both an air-to-ground capability, using a variety of bombs, rockets and flares, as well as some basic air-to-air, -air using the close-range AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, which are on each wingtip. Additionally, there are two 20mm cannons in the nose that can be used in either role. And to detect airborne targets, you have a radar on board with a range out to around 40 nautical miles. And this is coupled with a lead computing optical sight with a sight camera. For its power plant, there are two afterburning jet engines that let it fly supersonic. And to help provide these engines with extra air during the takeoff and low speed flight, there are auxiliary intake doors on each side of the fuselage. Engine any ice is available when you need it. But this will cost you about 6 to 9% of your overall thrust and will end up burning an extra 100 pounds per hour of fuel. The fuselage itself is a coke bottle shape with the wings, horizontal stabilizer, and vertical stabilizer designed with sweep back to them. The wings also have leading edge and trailing edge flaps, which are used throughout an entire flight. And to reduce your workload with these flaps, they can simply be left in an automatic position so it's always controlled by the airplane's central air data computer. The flight controls aren't fly-by-wire, but are hydraulically actuated and provide an artificial feel to the pilot with both rudder trim and aileron trim available. There's also an aileron limiter that is activated when the landing gear retracts, but this can be overcome with extra stick pressure to improve the roll rate. And to further improve the F5's handling in flight, there are both yaw and pitch dampers. Underneath the fuselage is the speed brake, and this extends to increase drag and slow you down. But if you're at high airspeeds or if you're using that centerline store, this will actually reduce the speed brake's maximum extension. Another feature to slow you down is a drag chute. So if you're landing on a short runway and you need to reduce your landing distance, this will be deployed from the back of the airplane. If you had an emergency and you needed to use an arresting hook system to land, then there is an emergency arrestor hook on the airplane. But you need to keep in mind that once it's deployed, it can't be retracted. The landing gear is a tricycle type gear with a steerable nose wheel, which is activated by a button on the control stick. So you'll need to hold down the nose wheel steering button to activate it. This will allow you to taxi straight along a taxiway, as well as make tight turns whenever you need to. An interesting feature of the nose gear is an option to hike it, and this extends the nose strut to assist your takeoff. By hiking the nose strut, it increases your overall angle of attack by around 3 degrees, and this ends up shortening your takeoff roll. There are two fuel systems on board the F5, one forward and one aft. The forward system is called the left system and carries around 2,000 pounds and feeds the left engine, and the right system has 2,500 pounds and feeds the right engine. So because the extra weight isn't towards the back of the airplane, you need to remember to make use of that auto balance feature in order to keep the center of gravity within limits. There's also the ability to carry a centerline fuel tank and fuel tanks on the two inboard wing pylons to increase your range if you wish. To defend yourself against threats, there are countermeasures called chaff and flares available to you. Chaff is what you would use when you are targeted by radar guided missiles tracking you, while flares are what you use to defeat infrared missiles which follow the heat source of your engine. There's also a radar warning receiver system, known as RAW, which detects what signals are being sent out in your area and will display them to you in the cockpit to improve your situational awareness of what's around you. Lastly, for communications and navigation, there is one UHF radio, an automatic direction finder, and a tack hand system. So if you can tune into either a ground or airborne based radio station, you can navigate with reference to it using the horizontal situation indicator, which is also called the HSI. So now we've got a general overview of the F5E, we're going to go inside the cockpit and check it out. Alright, so let's take a look at the F5's cockpit. We've got some circuit breakers in the back, and then just moving in front of that is your countermeasure mode selectors. You've got chaff and flare with different options. Uh, on the right of that is your flare jettison to get rid of all the flares you have in one go. Here's your pitch and yaw dampers to help improve your stability in flight. On the right of that is the rudder trim. Moving forward, this is your radar control panel. 
So you've got a radar mode and radar range selections. There's an acquisition button which will lock onto the target or break the lock. This is your TDC. It'll move the symbol around on the radar so you can lock it. And then in front of that, that's the radar elevation control which will aim the radar up and down. On the left side of the throttle is your flap lever. Usually you'll keep this in the thumb switch position which means you control the flaps using the thumb switch on the throttle. On the left side of the throttle is a missile uncaged switch which will let you uncage the AIM-9 seeker and improve your chance of maintaining tone before firing. The white switch in the bottom of the throttle, this is your countermeasure switch, so it's going to dispense chaff and flares based on the mode you've selected. The black one above it is your speed brake. The red button is the microphone button. Under that is your flap thumb switch, so you can leave it in automatic for most of the flight if you like. And the black one up top there, that's the sight cage button, which will align the radar in front of the aircraft for target tracking and acquisition. So moving forward to the front left of the cockpit, we've got the nose strut switch, so when you set it to extend, this is going to hike the nose and shorten your takeoff roll. Now looking at the instrument panel up the top, that's your pitch trim indicator. Then you've got a flaps position indicator there. Underneath that is the T handle to deploy the drag chute. Here's your airspeed and mark indicator. That set index knob will let you bug a desired airspeed that you want to set. And you've got an attitude indicator, a fast direct switch to reset it if it's required, horizontal situation indicator, an altimeter, an emergency arresting hook which you saw, a vertical speed indicator, a standby attitude indicator, and the angle of attack indicator. These three lights tell you when the gear is down and locked. We've also got our gear warning silencer, the lever, and a downlock override. Coming to the left vertical panel, you've got fuel shutoff switches, the armament and sight control brightness knob, landing slash taxi light, two engine start push switches, a yellow landing gear alternate extension handle, the AIM-9 missile volume control, armament position selection switches, so you're going to select the weapons by the pylon they're on, and then the jettison system, which you'll use in conjunction with that, and that way you can jettison whatever pylon you need to get rid of. And there's an emergency jettison button which will remove everything except for the M9s. Here's your external store selection. So depending on what you're going to be doing ground attack with, you will be selecting uh, whatever weapon you're going to be using. There's your guns, missiles and camera switch. If it's guarded, you won't be able to fire the guns or missiles. This switch lets you arm the bombs depending on which bomb you're using. And this switch controls the weapon release interval. Up the top here is the angle of attack indexer. We're going to talk about this a bit more with the landing video. It's a slip and skid indicator. And then for the sight control panel, there's several different sight modes to choose from, um, depending on what you're going to be attacking. Here you control the brightness of the reticule, as well as how many mils you depress it when using it for ground attack. On the left and right there we have fire warning lights. In between those lights you have the radar scope with its controls. This is your UHF radio with your frequency up top and the controls for that underneath. There are your controls for setting up the TACAN as well as a mode selection which lets you either navigate using the radio and direction finding mode or the TACAN. There are pedal adjustments with more circuit breakers. Coming up to the top here, you've got a magnetic compass with a little light if you need it. And then there's a clock. Radar warning system with the control panel up the top there and the display is underneath. There's an accelerometer which lets you know how many G's you've been pulling. Hydraulic pressure up the top. Tachometers for the left and right engines. Exhaust gas temperatures for both engines. Here's the indicator for the auxiliary intake doors. Nozzle positions for both engines oil pressure, the fuel flow, fuel quantity between the aft and forward cells, and the cabin pressure. Coming down you've got an antenna selection for the radio and a canopy defog, as well as the pitot heat and engine anti-ice switches, and a cabin pressure switch. There are the temperature controls, 
Then we get into the fuel transfer between the centerline tank and the pylon tanks if you use them. There's a crossfeed switch there which you can use to keep supplying both engines with fuel. Here's the auto balance switch which you use to keep the fuel balanced between fuel cells. Black and yellow is going to be your canopy jettison handle. And then we've got the battery switch along with the two generators. And then on the right of that is the oxygen quantity. On the oxygen regulator, there's a flow indicator which will flow white when oxygen is flowing depending on the setting. There's an oxygen pressure gauge. And this red lever is the emergency lever. This is how the oxygen is sent to the mask. On the right of that is a diluter lever. And then a supply lever which you need to turn the oxygen flow on and off. Under the regulator is your caution light panel which is going to display caution messages. And then under that is your IFF, SIF control panel. Here's a compass switch. The normal setting you're going to use is going to be mag. And there's the lighting panel for interior and exterior lighting. And then a fuel and oxygen switch which is used to test the gauges are working properly. And lastly that's where the map case is. That'll complete this video for the general overview of the uh, F5. The next video is going to cover some uh, other aspects like the startups, taxi and takeoff procedure. Um, if you want to be notified of those, be sure to become a subscriber. And if you want the early access to those when those are available, then you, know, you can join my Patreon to do that. Till next time though, remember to fly safe and check your six.